I have been asked to make a video about turning forces. A turning force is called a torque. So let's talk about torques. When you apply a single force on the body, you know that this body will accelerate. That is the second law of Newton that you all know. What about when you apply a force on an object which is fixed but that can rotate? For example, consider this plank. It is fixed on a pulley that can turn freely. So the plank cannot move in translation, but it can rotate. If you apply a force on the plank, instinctively, you know that the plank is going to start rotating. To start rotating, that means that the plank's rotational velocity is increasing. In other words, the force F generates a rotational acceleration of the plank. If the magnitude of that force increases, it just makes sense that it implies a larger rotational acceleration. That looks furiously like the second law of Newton. Larger force, larger rotational acceleration. But in the case of rotational motion, there are other factors that you need to consider. If you apply that force at a different position on the plank, the rotational acceleration will change. For example, applying the force on the axis itself will not have any effect on the rotation. If the force is applied on a point close to the axis, the rotational acceleration will be small. If the force is applied further away from the axis, the angular acceleration will be larger. I can demonstrate this to you with a little experiment. This is my little setup. This bar can rotate around an axis. I can lock the rotation if I want. On this bar, there is a mass that can move around. At the point where the mass is located, there will be a force perpendicular to the bar due to the mass. It's actually the weight of the mass which is applied on the bar. Okay, so let's place the mass close to the axis and liberate the rotation. What happened is obvious, it started to rotate. So if it started to rotate, it means its rotational velocity increased. So there was a rotational acceleration due to that force. Now let's move the mass away from the axis and then unlock the rotation. Same phenomena, the bar started to rotate, but this time it was faster. The increase in rotational velocity was larger, so the rotational acceleration was larger. For a given force applied on a system that can rotate, like that bar, the rotational acceleration is proportional to the distance between the axis and the point of application of that force. Another factor that affects the rotational acceleration is the orientation of the force that is applied on the plank. If the force is applied along the plank like this, there will be no effect on the rotation. That is actually true for any force with a direction that passes through the axis of rotation. On the other hand, if the force forms an angle theta with the plank, there will be a part of that force effective in accelerating the rotation. That part is the perpendicular component of that force. Here, F sine theta. A torque is proportional to three things. The torque here is proportional to the magnitude of the force F. It is also proportional to the distance between the rotation axis and the point of application of the force F, so the distance R. And it is proportional to the sine of this angle. This angle theta is defined by the angle between the force and the axis here, which we call the arm. So you can write down the magnitude of the torque as being R F sine theta. This angle theta, you can also define it differently. You can say that this angle theta is the angle between the force F and a vector R which is a vector defined by the difference of position between the point of application of the force and the position of the axis of rotation. In that case, you can write down that the torque is the cross product of R and F. 
When you have a cross product between vectors, you generate a vector. So 2 is a vector. If it's a vector, I should be able to represent it somewhere here, right? Well, I can. When you have two vectors in a cross product, what you generate is a vector which is perpendicular to the plane defined by these two vectors. So here, the torque, tau, would be perpendicular to the board. Is it going towards the board or outside the board? We can figure it out with the right hand cold screw hand rule. So, to do that, you look at the force F and you see how would it make the bar rotate? It would make it rotate clockwise, right? So you use your hand and you rotate your hand clockwise, the fingers like this. The thumb will be your torque. So in that situation, the torque goes towards the board. And I could represent it here, like that. The torque will be located at the position of the axis. Let's consider another situation. Suppose you have a bar like that, with an axis of rotation here. And this time the force is oriented that way. So you see the bar would actually rotate anti-clockwise. And you see how I did it with my hand, the torque just pops out. So the torque here would be directed outside the board. Torques are extremely useful to solve problems in rotational mechanics. In a future video, I will solve you how to solve these kind of problems in five easy steps. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe and smash this notification bell. It really encourages me to make new videos. In the meantime, I wish you the best. And I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.